Today we talk about Coup, a game of bluffing and deduction, but I would say mainly bluffing, set in the world of The Resistance, the game The Resistance. Even though I have to say, you wouldn't be able to tell most likely if you weren't told. The mechanics are very different, the art has the same style, but there are also many other games that have the same or similar art. Um, but this is what we're told, it's set in the world of the resistance, a brutal sci-fi world of power and people trying to achieve all sorts of goals and most like, most importantly, they're trying to dominate the scene. In this game you have some coins that you will use to uh, purchase uh, benefits and to perform actions. Then, most importantly, you have a deck of cards, each card representing a different type of character, and there are several groups of characters. That is, you have multiple uh, cards for each character, and the different copies have different art, but they have the same function. The characters uh, that you have are the assassin uh, that allows you to assassinate other players by spending money, by spending three coins. The ambassador, we'll talk about the powers of the characters later. The duke, the captain, and the contessa. You shuffle together all of these cards and then at the beginning of the game you give two of them face down to each player. The two cards are played, are, are placed face down before each player, you also sign two coins to start the game to each player, and you give each player a player aid. This is super important, especially <clears throat> early on when players are learning the game. And the game is ready to start. The two cards that you have here, you can look at them, but you have to keep them secret. And these cards represent the powers that you can legitimately use. The powers, the, the people, the characters that you can legitimate influence to gain benefits and to have them perform their typical action for you. When it is your turn, you take an action that maybe any of the actions described uh, here in the player aid. You may take the income action, in which case you take a coin from the bank, or you may take for an ad and you aid and you take two coins. You are wondering why would I take income then instead of for an aid? Because somebody uh, who claims to have the duke may say, well, but I had the duke and so I'm gonna block your action. So you just wasted your action. Another action that you can perform is to perform a coup, that is, you pay seven coins, pretty expensive, but you choose a player to lose an influence. To lose an influence means simply to lose one of the cards here, in which case the player that is the target of the coup selects one of their cards and places it face up before them, that card is out of the game, useless. And you win the game by <clears throat> pretty much being the last player standing when all players have been eliminated, which happens when a player has their two cards uh, in front of them face up, that is when a player is eliminated, everybody is eliminated but you, you are the winner of the game. Back to the actions that you can perform. So you uh, can perform a coup if you have the money and that cannot be stopped. It's extremely powerful, so you may want to prevent the players from gaining too much money. These are actions that are strictly related to the characters. I mentioned earlier that these cards represent actions that you can legitimately claim. That is, you do not have to... Uh, to own on control a specific character to perform the action. All you have to say during your turn is you claim. I claim to have the duke, so I perform his action, which is to take three coins. I claim to be the assassin, I play three coins, uh, and I assassinate another player. That is, a player loses an influence. Uh, we'll skip, actually, let's use this side here. The ambassador, uh, you can say, I have the ambassador, so I'm going to exchange cards with the court deck, which simply is the main deck. You draw two cards, then you can exchange either or, on or none with the cards that you have here. You can claim to be the captain, and then you take two coins from another player. Cards also have a some some cards also have a reaction power, which is a power that you use when other players are doing stuff. For example, if you have the duke, then you can if you have the duke or claim to have the duke, and somebody is taking for an aid, you say, well, but I have the duke, I'm gonna block you. If you're trying to steal money from somebody 
the person may say, well, but I have the ambassador or I have the captain, then uh, they block your stealing. The assassination, you choose a target, say, I'm going to assassinate you, John, or whatever the name of the person you are trying to assassinate, and the person says, well, but I have the Contessa, and the Contessa blocks the assassination. It's very important that uh, we keep in mind that it's about claiming, you do not have to have the actual uh, card with the power that you're using because other players can challenge you so at any time any player not necessarily the one that is the target of an action can say well I'm gonna challenge your assertion that you have that card and at that point <clears throat> the player needs to show that they have the character that provides the action that they're trying to use. So I'm trying to assassinate John, and I say, John, I have the assassin, I pay three coins and you're dead. But Sarah says, well, I challenge that, I don't think you have the assassin. And I'm like, uh, oops, yep, I cannot show you that I have an assassin, that's embarrassing. So, people can challenge you. If the challenge is successful, that is, you challenge a player and the player does not have the card that they claim to have, then the challenge is successful and the challenged player loses an influence. If the challenge is successful, I can show you that they do have the card that I'm claiming to use for an action or for a uh, counter, then uh, the challenger loses the challenge, they challenge somebody and somebody unfairly, then the challenger loses an, uh, loses an influence and loses a card, has to flip a card face up. So that's how challenges work. At the end of a challenge, uh, somebody will lose an influence, either the challenge player, if he cannot provide the card he was claiming, or the challenger, if the other player does have the card. And of course, if you had to reveal a card in response to a challenge, then you have to get another card from the deck. Well, face down, face down. Then you have to get another card from the deck. And that's uh, how the general idea works. So there are a couple of main ways in which players will lose influence. They will lose influence because of successful assassinations, because of coups, and because of challenges, whether successful or unsuccessful, somebody will lose an influence there. The game comes also with a variant, and this is why the player aid is double-sided, <clears throat> and the two sides are slightly different, to take into account the powers of the Inquisitor, which in this variant you can choose to use instead of the Ambassador. So you simply replace the cards representing the Ambassador with the ones representing the Inquisitor, and then you have this other character here, which has two powers, one of which you can use every time that you claim to have him. One power is that you exchange card, so you exchange a card with the court deck. So it is a more limited exchanging power as opposed to the ambassador that will allow you to exchange up to two cards. But while that power specific is more limited, he also has another power that no one else has, which is you can use or claim the Inquisitor to examine another player's card, so you can examine a card another player has, you can look at it, you are the Inquisitor after all, so you are the Inquisitive type, and then you can choose either to give the card back to the player, and that means that you have an advantage now because you know uh, one of the cards that the player has, or you can force the opponent to exchange the card with the deck, and also this card, uh, if you have it or claim it, uh, can block stealing. The standard game is for two to six players and it is played with a deck of 15 cards. However, the game comes with extra cards in case you want to play with more players, so you can play with six or seven, um, which I would not recommend. The game would be too slow, keeping track of what everybody's doing uh, will reduce whatever little element of deduction is left, because of course part of the thing is try to figure out what cards may still be in the deck and what cards are not around. Uh, with too many people then that becomes very hard to track. Another thing also is that the, the time to play the game would be increased and the downtime for players that are eliminated early 
would be longer, so it would be unpleasant for them to sit around. Yes, you may say it's fun to watch other people playing, but it's not as fun as playing the game. That should be self-explanatory. Um, and this is a game that is about direct elimination. It is about eliminating all of the opponents or keeping a low profile and waiting for uh, most of the opponents to eliminate each other and then all of a sudden you come out and inflict the final blow uh, to an opponent and you win the game. I've seen people uh, playing that way and winning that way simply because we forgot that they were there and they managed to win the game. That's, that's one technique. You do not want to attract too much attention on yourself in this game after all. But uh, there are pluses and minuses about the direct elimination thing. On one hand, it is darn fun when you are eliminating another player. It is not so much when you're eliminated early and you have to wait for the game to be over. Also, sometimes there is uh, that level of confrontation, that level of grudge that may come out when players make a big deal of telling you that they eliminated you gratuitously just because they kind of felt like Maybe it wasn't even good for their strategy, they just did it because, and then of course you will start doing the same to them. Which means you're playing suboptimally in two departments, both in the mechanical departments, because maybe you're not implementing the main strategies, you're simply uh, being carried away by your emotions, and the other way in which this is suboptimal is that you are, uh, I believe, not developing positive emotions, not developing the most useful and helpful uh, feelings towards other players in the group. I know many games have these screw you moments and there can be some pretty intense ones here. Some groups thrive on those, they love those and some of the groups and they may have members that feel a little more uncomfortable so just uh, just know this, I'm just warning you, this is an element. If you like that sort of like direct confrontation I'm gonna take you out of the game and maybe just because I feel like uh, this is a game definitely for you. Other than this, uh, the game is overall pretty short, so even if I eliminated earlier, it shouldn't be too much of a tragedy to wait for a couple of minutes. Uh, but again, still, that is a factor. This is definitely a game that you will not want to play just once because it is pretty addictive. It definitely creates that one more game syndrome, since a game can be played in 5 to 10 minutes. You will play once and then you will start playing a string of games. If you play it just as a as a filler, uh, I don't know that that's even very viable because most likely people will want to play a couple of rounds, uh, especially new players, because it takes a couple of games to really figure out what the game can do, really figure out how the characters interact and what the best strategies uh, will be. So, the first couple of games people are learning this, or figuring it out, and then they are getting excited, and, and then you want to play more, because at that point you want to test the knowledge that you have acquired, and the ideas that you have developed during the, let's call them, uh, trial games, during the training games. Um, so there is, there is that, and an advantage that you have in a game this short is that you can have the training games, so when people are learning the game, and then the real games in the same session, as opposed to we play a game which is two hours, at the end of the first uh, game that took two hours, we are finally seeing uh, the strategy behind the rules, and then maybe we have to wait until next week or whenever before we can actually play a game in which we know, we, we really know what we are doing. It's a fun game, it's very different from Resistance, um, I really don't see any uh, resemblance or very, very little. Um, it's a game where it may be hard to come back. If you lose a card early on, then you're very vulnerable, um, vulnerable especially to gratuitous revenges, because then somebody who has a coup may just make you lose your last influence, um, which may not be the best move for them again, but they may do it. And that is uh, something that makes it hard. If you lose a card early on, it's not impossible, especially if you're playing with, um, with players that are playing strategically, then they may want to weaken everybody else before they inflict the final blow to you, as opposed to, uh, to damaging you as an opponent may still be in full strength, have a lot of coins, and then 
and be able to take down whoever it is that took you down. Um, the bluffing element, uh, uh, if you like it, well, this definitely is a game for you. This game is 99% about bluffing, just about keeping a straight face um, and lie incredibly. Even though I guess that in many cases you could just win a game without lying much, without bluffing much. If anything, I noticed that in my game, in my, my group and the games that we played, we tended not to bluff all that much. I do believe that there are games in which people just don't care at all about what they have and they are much blunter. I guess we have some more conservative players. Um, and, and sometimes the conservative players later after the game complained that they didn't have the right cards. I think in that case they kind of missed the point that the cards that you have are almost secondary uh, if you have good bluffing, acting, lying skills. So, overall, Coop is a fun game. The flow of the game is is fast enough and the overall uh, game is really quick. So if a game is not fun, doesn't end well, uh, for whatever reason it feels like uh, there was just a player dominating. In short, if in a player, if in a game uh, players for whatever reason didn't have much fun, or at least some of them did not have much fun, they have chances of playing many more games within the same session. The bluffing is great and it's really fun. It will not sit well in our groups, but with the right group, this can be uh, an engine for a lot of in your face moments that will result in a lot of laughs and funny moments. The art is great. Um, it's good, it's a really good game. It has been around for a while, probably you have heard about it already uh, from other sources. Uh, it has been on my shelves for quite a while. I picked it up back in the day after I pre-ordered it. This is the Kickstarter edition. Um, I don't know why, uh, I simply forgot that I had it. Recently I decided to give it a try and I'm happy that I did because then because playing this game was really a lot of fun.